So Miles had a writing assignment. A writing prompt is what it's called. And it says, what famous person would you like to meet and why? And he put Blake Shelton. And he said, why would you want to meet him? He said, because he sings good. I can't remember the last question, but basically his answer was, I'd like to be for him to be my dad or him to be his son. So Miles wants to be Blake Shelton's kid. comment on yesterday's video about how in the last two minutes of the Super Bowl I missed because YouTube TV I think I said cut out but it didn't really cut out what happened was sort of the long story shortened I was watching it on the Apple TV app the YouTube TV app inside of Apple TV it just came out like Friday and I started losing audio uh, up to the halftime and then during the halftime show and being that I'm a big JT fan I turned that off and started streaming it back from my phone. And then that worked really good. Well, towards the end of the game, I jumped on Twitter just to sort of see what everybody was you know, saying and clicked on some one tweet that had a video link and it disconnected the stream, the cast to the TV. I was like, oh crap, so I, I tried to get it back. But for some reason, because the you because the Super Bowl had ended or should have ended in the time frame that YouTube had it, there was nowhere to actually click to watch the Super Bowl. Um, the only thing I could get up was like the Spanish feed or something. So when I went to NBC, the only thing that was up was the post game show, which hadn't officially started yet. So when I clicked on it, there was nothing. It wouldn't let me go to anything. So basically, I, I don't know how they what the how they came that that issue like I, I don't understand what caused it somehow if what it seemed to me is that if the show is done or should be done it doesn't show on their guide or live anymore so there's nowhere to click and you can't just like hit NBC because when you click NBC it just takes you to all the shows so I think it's I, I don't know I heard Hulu shut down the last two minutes but mine wasn't because YouTube TV shut down is because my cast was interrupted and there was no way to get back to the Super Bowl because the Super Bowl wasn't listed anymore as a live show so just let's just say I was a little upset I don't think my Apple TV remote works anymore and uh, I'm sure my wife was thinking I was an idiot while I was in, uh, she was in the bedroom and I'm out here cussing and ranting and raving. What I want to show you guys today is what I did at work at lunch. What I did was make a 3D tour of the front offices at my work. Not all the offices but just a general thing. I wanted to try out the reason why I got the GoPro Fusion was for this very reason, for 360 videos uh, to use for clients. And one of the ones, one of the areas I'm looking to break into would be virtual tours or uh, VR tours or 360 tours, whatever you want to call it. But basically there's a free software which I think I would rather, I, I need to try to see if I can find something I can buy so that way I can make pull down the videos myself. This website does it all for free. It's called Cupix. Uh, I'll leave a link down below. They give you a link and I think it's in beta now so I don't know what they're gonna charge once it's out of beta for you to have a link that's shareable and that they're gonna host. But it was super simple, took a little bit of time. I'll show you guys a little bit how I set it up and we'll take a look at that that website and how I, how I load it in. Uh, let's just get into it. I hold on to this storm cause I need to be swept away, swept away I, I'm cornered in the cold where you left me, left again all right, so what you need for hardware is obviously a 360 camera. I'm using the GoPro Fusion, but you really can use any 360 camera. I want to concentrate on using this one because obviously that's the one I'm using. Then I'm using the iFootage Cobra 2. This is the A150. You just need any type of monopod. You can't use a tripod because you don't want the legs going far out. This will compensate. This will, because it's so high up, it'll compensate and get rid. It won't see the feet on there, any type of monopod, and you want the monopod to be as close to eye level as possible. This is probably about eight inches shorter than my eye level, but that's fine. So that's really it for hardware. And then you need your cell phone because that's how you're going to trigger taking pictures. So once you get everything set up, 
make sure you're level this way, check it from the side. But then all, all I did is, you, they recommend you do six feet. I actually did every two feet or three feet. So you get it set up in this position, and then what I did is took my phone and then went around and hid. You have to be out of sight of the 360. So obviously here I got a bunch of spots I can hide behind a wall. So you can see you're in position. You got your 360 view. Now you wanna be on photo. And then what I'll do is get back out of the way and snap a picture. Then you come back. Move it a couple feet. Then I come around. Go around this side. Take another picture. So that's really it for the picture taking. And then like I said, go down all your hallways, into any rooms that you want, around any corners. When you do doorways, I suggest doing one here, one on the threshold, and then one in the threshold. That way you get a nice transition going in. But other than that, let's take a look at the software. So what you start off after you've gotten all of your pictures taken, the way I find it easiest is connect your Fusion to your laptop and run the Fusion Studio software. You would hit the add media if you had pulled the SD cards off and put it onto your thing, but I find it easiest just to connect to Fusion, browse camera for media. Now the generating previews takes quite a while, so we'll fast forward through this. <laughs> So now that you have these, you can see all of your images are all in the software. And what I like to do is here, you can go into your settings here and you can adjust the sharpness, shadows and highlights, tint, temperature, just some basic controls, or you can run them all flat and then you can pull them out and then bring them into Lightroom or Photoshop if you want to edit them even more. I find that the GoPro settings are pretty good. Um, you don't want to go crazy with color correction on a tour of a building because you want everything to be sort of as natural as possible, but you can work on the highlights and shadows, things like that. So then what you're going to do is you select all of them. I'll select a few. We won't do all of them because like I said, I've already done this. Add to the queue, the render queue. Then here, I always do editing, 5.2K, and then stereo. Obviously, there's no stereo, but these are just generic uh, ones. Create a render queue, and then that's it. Then over here, you just hit render all, and it's going to start rendering the images, uh, pulling them down into regular JPEGs, and they will end up in a folder, which you can see over here, open in Explorer, which it's not an Explorer in here, but uh, and then all of them are in here. So now you have all your images, I have them all in this rendered folder and under the uh, GoPro Fusion render and then all of them are in there. You can see they're doubling up on some because I've already done this. So I'm going to stop this and cancel it. Close down the Fusion software. Then you're going to go and you're not going to want to use Safari, you're going to want to use Google Chrome because I tried using Safari and there was issues. So Cupix. Sign in using either LinkedIn or Facebook. So what you're going to do here, this is my one that I've already done, which I'll show you in a second, but you're going to put new 3D tour. You can name it. You can put a location. You can tag it. And then if you're doing like different sections, like if you're doing like, say, the first floor of the house or the second floor of the house, you can do those in different sections, outside, backyard, front yard anything like that. Or if you're using, say, like an industrial place, you can do the front offices, you can do the warehouse space, you can do the production floor. You can have everything broke off into sections so you can have individual videos, tours. So what you would do here, you can either select the photos, which I would go through and select here, or you can drag and drop them in. Let 
which is what I did for mine. Now they're all in, all you have to do is hit submit. And then now this process took, I believe for this one took about, took like two, two and a half hours. Since you already signed up, it's got your email and everything. You can close this out since it's all web-based. You don't have to worry about any of that. So you can still see it's uploading back over here, but this is the one that I've already done. So I can preview in the player, edit it or delete it. You can share with people, publish. I already have this one published. So I have a link that I can send the link to anybody or post the link on my website and then the video is readily available. So let's just take a look at in the player. So like I said, like two, two and a half hours later, you get an email, it's got the link, you go in, boom, this is done. So here it gives you some little instructions, explore in 3D or move, so you can move around the space, just like you could in a 360 degree picture or video. I added, you can add in 3D text. So I like this, I just put this in here as an example, but. The reason I had this idea, and I think I mentioned this before, is at the gym, when I started a new gym, I would have liked to know where the equipment was laid out at before I actually went in. Um, my wife said one of the reasons she doesn't want to go to the gym is she doesn't know how to use the equipment properly and she's embarrassed to try to use it. So if you had something like this at the gym, you could literally have everything labeled and then someone could actually look up that machine and figure out you know how to use it or, or what it does or where the machines are in there so you're not wandering around trying to figure out what machines you want to use if you have a workout plan so anyways then you got these little arrows at the bottom to where you're just going to click and it's going to take you into that area so i'll go into this room here like i had mentioned before about the thresholds to do like a couple extra pictures there and you can go anywhere into the room. And like I said, the more pictures you take, the better the details will be. So I'm super happy with this software. Like I said, it's completely free. So there's really not much to complain about. I'm curious on what it'll be when it's out of beta because I'd like to actually pay for the software and then actually be able to download the video myself and not them host it. Or if they have a monthly fee or a yearly fee, I'm fine with that as well. So as you can see, this works really well. Everything's internet based. So, and I did this on my phone yesterday. So I was able to uh, check the link on my phone and then use my phone. I actually found the phone a little bit easier to use because you could just tap or use your finger to swipe around. It was a little bit easier to use in my opinion. So, but let me show you what it is when you edit it. You can see where you took all the pictures at. And I want to show you that real quick. So here's your overview, all the pictures. You can look at your floor plan, the floor plan. So that shows that's all the places where I took pictures. So like I said, I'm doing every two to three feet. You could, they recommend every six, but the more pictures you have, the better the, the end result's gonna be. Um, publisher is gonna show you, it's gonna give you the link to use, autoplay, um, just some different, you know, enable VR mode. If you notice, there was a little VR um, headset goggle thing down in the corner. You can click that and it'll break it up into two sections so you can use goggles to, to take the tour. Uh, you can adjust some color. You can change the unit of measures to feet or millimeters. And then you have low resolution, standard resolution. Uh, but yeah, and then you can embed the code. I mean, it's just... I don't know, super powerful software for free. So you can't really go wrong. I'll leave a link for Cupix down below so you guys can check it out for yourself. If you have a 3D camera, I highly recommend just trying this, even if you just do it at your house to mess around. Uh, like I said, I'll be doing this to try to break into this market in my area. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do my house. Uh, I think Friday morning, I'm gonna take a couple hours off work and do my house while everybody's gone. And I'm gonna put these together and package it and send it out to a lot of local 
companies and businesses and offer this service. I also have it on the website. So this is another area that I'm looking to break into. And I think it's for the amount of hardware and software that you, the upfront money, I, I'm expecting a pretty good return on investment. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this works out well. If you guys got any questions, leave it down in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up. If you yet to subscribe, you can do that down there as well. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Yeah.